All right, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at the connection of Touch Designer and Ableton once again. It's been a long time, and I'm very happy that I can kind of dive into this uh, topic more deeply because a lot of people requested it as well. And um, yeah, just a little heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Do you say it like that? I don't know. It's gonna be quite a long video. <laughs> uh, this is actually part of my uh, like of my explorations for my bachelor project. So for that, I'm kind of building a UI or like a system for audiovisual live performances, so I can like perform with musicians and DJs live on stage. And um, yeah, I'm gonna make like a walkthrough overview overview kind of video at some at some point when it's done. So like in a month or two, something like that. Let's see. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is actually just a, a small part of uh, of the whole system, and I just kind of wanted to share. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, before I start, this this isn't working perfectly, and it always kind of doesn't work when I try to present it. But technically, it it sort of works, and I, and I and I don't think it can. I I I don't know how to make it much better yet. But uh, I think it it's good for the most part. And it's definitely like even if it doesn't work perfectly, it's still going to be quite interesting for you, I think, to to just kind of see how you can uh, connect Touch Designer Ableton more deeply and how to connect that to a UI uh, in Touch Designer. All right. Anyways, <coughs> what is the actual idea behind this? Um, so I want to uh, I wanted to be able to play a rhythm live to the music that somebody is playing and just instantly loop that um, rhythm. And uh, yeah, for that, that, that's pretty much it. And then, then I wanted to use this, I uh, wanted to be able to use this rhythm for like my visuals. So I can like base my vi visuals now on this played in rhythm, or you could also drive like lights or anything really, because it's just uh, a value, these two values here. Um, all right, so for this to work, um, there's actually a lot of stuff behind that because I wanted to just have that work in Touch Designer and I tried for uh, a couple of days I guess and um, with the gesture chop mostly and, and some other stuff and that all just didn't like satisfy me because you can't really like quantize it and you had to like play it absolutely perfect and you know that that's not pr really possible especially when slight lag or something comes in there so basically it just doesn't really work with touch designer or, or just or rather you know i haven't found a way to make it work in touch designer so um yeah i just kind of switched to uh, ableton and with that uh and some hacking and stuff it kind of works it really took a long time to figure this out but i uh, kind of did now and so so what needs to happen in the background is that we need to align uh, Ableton and the the tempo, the, the BPM of Ableton, exactly with the song and also where the one is. So that's what this pulse here is for. So we can always define, okay, we're like, we're at one right now. So like one, two, three, four, you know. So as you can see here, this is always like looping one, two, three, four. And um, we need to, you know, always play Ableton right at the one. That makes sense. So what we have here is uh, a tap tempo kind of system that just uses the tap tempo of Ableton. And um, so this whole thing is just as good as this Ableton tap tempo thing is. And this pulse here is just to like play uh, Ableton on the one. And here we can also manually type in the tap tempo. So we don't have to always like, so we can just ask the musician, for example, and type it in and, you know. All right, <clears throat> um, and then what we can do is we can record, uh, we, we can press record, and then on the next one, we can uh, um, we can tap in a rhythm based on the length down here. So one, two, or four bars. You can also, you could technically add more. Um, I don't think it makes much sense. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And then what we're doing is that we're sending it over to, to uh, Ableton. And in Ableton, it is then recorded and just looped and also quantized. And that was like one of the most important things about this. We can here is all German, but you know, we can technically go here to quantize uh, while recording or well, I, don't know, I don't know how it's called. And then you can uh, set the kind of quantization here. 
and I've taken one uh, like 16th right now. Um, so if you have a lot of lag, eighths probably make more sense. But then again, you can't play very uh, detailed rhythms. Anyways, so I'm just gonna show you, and it's pro I'm probably gonna fail <laughs> because it usually kind of works, but I'm gonna try it here, it always doesn't. So I'm gonna like just play this standard song, which I kind of can't hear anymore, but the thing is that it apparently one video of mine kind of got banned because uh, I used a different uh, different song. Anyways, so what I can do now, it's already kind of zinged from this tempo, so I can just... Okay, now I zinked it, as you can see. More or less. I'm just gonna show you tap tempo. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it's not perfect, but um, you know, it's just uh, the tap tempo of Ableton, so you can, you know, what can you do? It's just that. I tried others, like in Touch Designer as well, but uh, those don't work better than this, so I guess, yeah. But you can also just type it in like this, and it should technically work. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to record. All right, so I just played this rhythm in here. And uh, it quantized it, so it's perfectly aligned. And, oops. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I <laughs> didn't talk much now. Uh, it was uh, focused. So, here you can see it's just uh, the one, two, three, four, and here's the, the loop fitting to that. <laughs> okay, so uh, lots of just showing. Um, I'm actually going to get into it now. So, um, let me uh, please bypass this. So, can't, can't hear it anymore. Alrighty, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this. Actually, let me just, whoops, what's going on now? Please don't, oh, of course it crashes. Um, fuck, <laughs> one second. So we can also like in the, on the Ableton here, we can, um, I'm just going to delete uh, everything that we have here so I can show you what's going on. Um, so we just have two MIDI's, um, two MIDI uh, tracks, and uh, we're taking in the MIDI of this on the second one. So I'm going to create that. Yeah, that, that's all right. Okay, we, we're going to delete this anyways. And this as well. So just so I can, I can just show you everything. All right. Um, so here again in Ableton, we just have uh, a, a we have two we have we have two MIDI tracks. One is just taking uh, all ins and uh, just set to the uh, default. And here we take the MIDI from the first MIDI track, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also important is that we have this set to recording. All right, so let's uh, start with the whole interface stuff because, um, you know, the UI, and that's going to take quite a bit. So I'm going to set the, wi uh, the width here to 600 and the height to 480. And I want to call this um, just r always have trouble typing that word rhythms. And let's use this as a window operator. All right. And also, what I want to do is uh, align the children, but I'm going to show you that in a second. So in here, let's now create two more containers. Um, and I'm going to call them one tap tempo 
and the other one to rhythm because we uh yeah we want to have like more uh user like ui elements in there um so it's nice to like have them grouped differently and also technically or that's what i've what i kind of learned in the tut tutorials they should just if you align them like this they should technically just be like this is the first one and this is the second one but for some reason that doesn't work for me so i just uh, always define them by uh, a number so like one and two because what we want to do now on the rhythms on the parent container is set the children align to left to right and we don't see what's going on that's totally fine we'll do in a second uh, let's change the horizontal and vertical mode both to fill actually on this as well and um, as you can see they instantly resized and uh, let's give this a background color of like kind of some kind of blue turn on the background alpha alpha and make this some lovely pink and now if we zoom out you can see they're aligned left and right um, so perfectly uh, divided like the perfectly yeah divided I guess <laughs> um, and they're exactly the same size because we just set them to fill so they just fill whatever room there is perfectly um, okay so let's uh, first dive into the tap tempo actually before I do that let me drop the TD Ableton so I just go here to the TD Ableton and drop that in here and it's it says connected now if you haven't installed it um, it's gotten a lot easier you can I think you can just do it here have a look on the on the documentation I'm gonna link that or uh, otherwise have a look in my first Ableton video uh, tutorial uh, there I explain how to set this up I don't want to get into this here because it's already way too long this video um, <coughs> all right so yeah this is connected perfect if it, if it doesn't connect for you or like I, I can't really help you much there is much on the documentation about this or enough I guess all right um, so I'm gonna get back to that let's go to the tap tempo now and on the tap tempo I want to uh, insert five elements um, and these are mostly UI elements so we go to the palette here and to the basic widgets in the UI section and now we have all these different UI elements that we can use and firstly I want to use a header then I want to use um, a momentary button and another momentary button and uh, I'm gonna explain what these do in a second and um, I also want to have a field string and I want to have just a container okay now there's some things we can change for all of these but let first let's name them so one header two is gonna be tap so this is where we like tap our uh, stuff in then uh, I'm gonna set a pulse here a uh, let's just call this manual because that's how we manually type in the tempo and let's just call this one feedback and for all of these we want to go to the layout and set them to uh, fill the width for sure on the header we can just set this to anchors and um, then we can set the top anchor to 0.1 uh, so when we go out here Ah, one thing I forgot for both of these what we need to do because you can see they're like on the bottom here we can go to children and align them top to bottom so now all of our elements are aligned top to bottom all right so for the height we uh, want to also change this to anchors and type in like 2.5 uh, for uh, both both of these and for these we can just change them to fill all right so what you can see here we have uh, two buttons and a field and just a container down there and this name up there and now let's uh, style them because they look pretty ugly right now so on the header what we want to do go to the header tab and change this to center in both of them I want to go to the widget and change this to another font you can use any you want 
Um, that, that rhymes. Um, and maybe change this to 16. Yeah, we don't need this to be bold. And um, maybe make the font color like a nice and white. All right, uh, let's go here and change the label to display off. Go to the button and change the horizontal mode to fill. Actually, on both of these, so we can just kind of do the same things. Uh, let's go to, because it uses some kind of ugly icons here. I don't want any icons. And um, also, let's just turn these off and call this tap. Right click on here, copy the parameter, and we can just pass the reference there. And uh, same thing here, actually. So we can just call this um, polls. We could also call it play. Let's call it play, because we can. And copy this parameter and pass the reference here. So it's always the same if I change that. Yeah. All right, and let's change the font size to 16 or something, and uh, also change the font to something else, which you don't need to do. And on the tab, I want this to be like a dif kind of different, l differently looking uh, button. So let's change the off face color to some kind of blue, maybe. And uh, yeah, that's that's all right. On the string, <coughs> let's go to uh, to label and turn that off. And on the field, so if we type in like something here, you can see it's just down there and very small. Let's put this both to center. I think that should be always set to center. And um, also change this to 16. And maybe make this bold. And also change the padding here. We don't need any padding. And change, yeah, we don't really need to do anything here. Yeah, that's all right. Um, whoops. So, so we just have like this kind of field there, <laughs> and we can also change the font if we want to make this all nice and pretty. And on the feedback, all we want to do is change the background color to maybe like a kind of violet, and change the background color here maybe to something like that. We'll we'll, we'll get back to that. Okay, I'm going to, uh, of course, uh, oops. man, this is annoying. Um, okay, so <laughs> what we have done now is uh, created our first element after only 17 minutes. <laughs> so um, what we want to do is now change, uh, like create the second one. So we can just go and go here and copy this go in here and pass this. And um, we want to change the label to rhythm. And by the way, we want to change this label from header to tap tempo. And here we want to um, leave this the way it is. Here we want to call this record instead of play. And uh, what we could technically also do here maybe is just to make this like a sort of different color. Maybe something like this. And um, we don't actually need this. What we uh, instead want to have is a, um, a UI element where we have where we can switch between different options. So that is the um, button radio. So we just drop that down here and call it uh, for um, length because we want to say what kind of length this is. On here, let's change the children to top to bottom. Let's change both of these to fill. Let's go to the label and again center this. Um, change this to fill, no offset, uh, maybe make this like 12, change this to length, bigger, and something like that. Okay, we also don't want to have that many options, we just want to have the options for one, two, or four bars. So just type these in with a space in between, and now as you can see, we can nicely switch between them. 
And down here we can just kind of leave this. Actually, let's just give it a kind of different color, maybe that, because it's not very pretty. And now we have our two elements. Um, actually, this thing down here, I don't want this to be as big, so I'm just gonna do it like, just gonna make it a bit smaller. So the same thing for here, so it's the anchors and then 0.15. All right, so we have set up the uh, UI. Now we need to bind this so we can use, uh, like it, it just kind of makes sense with, you, with UI to bind this. So let's go to rhythms and like right click on here and customize this. Now let's change, uh, let's create a page that is called tap tempo. Create that and one that's called rhythm and create that. And on the tap tempo, we now wanna um, insert both of these. Now actually before we do that, let's call them uh, titty tap <laughs> and uh, TT pulse. And um, yeah, we, we can't actually use this, it's fine. Now we can uh, select both of these and drag, drag them in there. All right, before we do that, we need to go to our core and then to the palette and then go to the uh, package here. So UI basic widgets package. And now we can uh, drop those in here. Takes a bit. And we don't need to do anything else. These are just use, uh, needed if you, if you use uh, UI elements. So just leave them here. Uh, don't touch them, it's okay. They're, they're fine as they are. And now what we can do, we can drag these in here. And why we change the name is uh, because we like have these names here, or like these names appear here. I want to do the same thing for rhythm. So let's just go here and dra grab both of these and put them in here. So we can probably actually just do it with this. Ah, uh, yeah. So I forgot to change the names, of course. So I want to call this like maybe R tab and um, our record, record, and uh, our len length. And now we can just use these. All right, so we have all of these here, and uh, meaning we also have them here. So we can like kind of just, you know, um, control them from here. Okay, cool. Let's save this. Um, so let's go back in here and now let's actually do something uh, <laughs> instead of just setting everything up. All right, so on the Ableton package, um, we can delete uh, most of the stuff here. We just need um, the MIDI and the song and we, we need the MIDI twice, actually. And um, let me just uh, make this a bit smaller. Smaller, please. And um, on here, as you can see in my Ableton project, I have two uh, MIDI tracks, as I said in the beginning. And let's select these here. And actually on those, I also need a TDA MIDI on, on uh, each of those. So now I can like select the MIDI here and the TDA MIDI. And as you can see, it instantly gives me some kind of value. And I can do the same uh, for MIDI 2. All right, cool. So that that worked well. <laughs> um, so let's, let's start with the tap tempo. Uh, I wanna be able to now tap in the tempo and um, play or uh, like pulse the the project here in Ableton. So to do that, I am going to split my view and I'm gonna dive into the package here. Dive into the package that I, I never thought I would like say that. <laughs> um, so, and now what I can do is uh, just, no, actually, that wasn't the way I wanted to I wanted to do this. Um, and here, in the package, I want I want to use a parameter, chop, and um, I'm just gonna select one operator above this. So the rhythms that we just customize, 
Oops, I don't want to actually go there. Um, and now let's just add a null to this. And then we can go to the song here. Let's just drag it over here. And um, <coughs> now we have, uh, if you go to the tab here, able the song, we have, you can see we can tempo tab here, we can define the tempo, and we can play, so pulse this. And we want to use the, the TD tab to, um, to temp, like to pulse this, like to use this button here. So let's just put it on there. So chop reference, and the same with the pulse uh, that I thought it called play. I'm confused. Uh, anyways, so yeah, there we go. So um, if I just, uh, whoops, if I just view this and uh, make this smaller, then technically, as you can see here, I'm like, I'm tapping the tempo and I can press play. And then you can see this number here gets reset, which just means the whole thing starts again so yeah nice that works um, it's only been 26 minutes and this works <laughs> okay so <clears throat> we've pretty much uh, we're, we're almost done with the tap tempo no, actually we've done just half of the tap tempo um, so uh, how do we proceed so what we can do now is to uh, one second so let's actually split our view here again. Let's go here. And um, uh, let's go in here. So on the value uh, values tab of the field string, so our for manual co uh, container, we can now set the, the value here. Uh, and bind that with this tempo because as you can see this tempo actually also changed when we um, uh, when we t when we tapped the tempo in so we can right click on here copy this parameter and then right click and pass the bind in here so now I can actually type uh, like 120 in here and it changes here and it also changes in Ableton um, and I can also now like uh, tap in the tempo and it also changes here because of lovely, lovely binding. Okay. And uh, now just the last thing. We want to have feedback on uh, how like how our beat is going. Like uh, we just kind of want to have this value, uh, this value. So you can see it's just like one, two, three, four going through there. We want to visualize that as color, as I showed you in the beginning. So on here we can go to background alpha and um, just just use this <coughs> value so uh, one second oh please don't crash okay um, <laughs> I'm sorry about that so let's just uh, take a select here and um, yeah, okay. So I kind of need to uh, cheat here because um, I can't remember everything. So I, I just want to have like the beats here, and we want to use a uh, math to to uh, just kind of rearrange this from zero to four to zero to one. And now we can just uh, put a null here and. Um, just use this value on the background alpha. So that works uh, very nicely. I didn't actually have to look anywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. And yeah, so we're actually finally done with the tap tempo part. Save this and uh, yeah, what we also need to do, um, let's go. So our parent container here still has some kind of background. So let's turn that off. Uh, like just the alpha down and uh, yeah now you can nicely see what's going on here um, you can make this uh, a different color if you wish I wish okay so these really don't fit together <laughs> the colors okay so anyways we have done the tap tempo part 
And now let's do the rhythm part, which is a bit more tricky. Um, all right, so what we need to do here is to work with Python because we can't actually just do this with the um, with the uh, options that we have so far uh, on the TD Ableton component. So what we want to do here is uh, connect this to a null and um, this one as well. And um, actually this one as well. And let's call this len just for short for a length because this is what we're getting here. We're just getting this length value in there. And let's not worry about this and this right now. So what we want to do now, uh, we want to run a script every time we uh, press this. And um, to do that, we can just uh, right click on here, go to dats and pick chop execute. And we want to execute this file uh, or like the script uh, on the function on to, uh, from off to on and from on to off. Because we want to send a MIDI note because um, that, that's what we're doing. Like we were setting MIDI notes with this. And <clears throat> I want to play a MIDI note, what, like we want to set the value, like a veloc velocity when we like hit this and also when we release this, then we want to set it back to zero. So we need like the off to on and the on to off. And we, you need to like turn these on <laughs> on here and the value change off. So let's just delete all the stuff that we don't need. So all of this, so it's kind of just nice and clean. Uh, let's make a little space here, just so, yeah, so we have space, <laughs> personal space. Um, okay, so um, let's set up a variable here, which is our target, because we want to target um, this here. We want to target this uh, MIDI, because with this MIDI, we can now, like, we can kind of talk to this um, component here and um, use this to send MIDI data. So um, so let's go in here and define this as a variable. So let's type in op, and then we want to go back one step. So to the so here basically. Then we want to go into the TD Ableton package. So let's just write that here. Um, and then we want to go to uh, the uh, whoops the um, Ableton MIDI one. Okay, so this is pretty much all we need to do here for the for our target. That's what we want to address, kind of. And now we can just say target that we just defined dot send MIDI. And it's important that it's this is a capital S. So every f every small thing here is important, except for uh, white space. And now we need to define what type of data we want to send. So we want to send a note. And we want to send the note number 40. In this case, it doesn't really matter. You can also take one or, um, I don't know, 60 or something. And just use 40 for some reason. And now we want to define the velocity. So uh, the strength, basically, or like the value. So um, I'm just going to say 100, because that's easy to map always. Um, yeah. And then we can, like, that's pretty much it. Now we can just copy this and paste that in here uh, and just set this to zero because we want to send, like, the same note again. So it's still going to be note and 40 or whatever number you typed in here with the value or the velocity value is zero. So now let's have a look if this works. Um, yeah, so we're sending this here actually. So if I tap this, it's sending it to this one, the first track. But then we're using um, like the MIDI here from this one. So it's also like being played. So when I tap this, it works nicely. And as you can see, it doesn't go up to a hundred, like to full, because we've set it to a hundred. If I if I change this to one hundred twenty-seven, then it goes uh, all the way up. But uh, let's just keep it a hundred. All right, so that's the first part. Um, now what we need to do, and this is the more tricky part that I uh, kind of had to like hack my way through. Um, there is a huge list that somebody uh, published with all the commands for so-called remote scripts. So remote script is kind of the 
a, a script that you can use from another software to control parts in Ableton. Uh, there's also like the TD Ableton remote script and that's kind of what we're working with. But to, yeah, there's like an endless, seemingly endless list of commands you can do. So you can literally control everything. I'm going to link that in the description. But for this example, we're just going to need like two commands of that huge list. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to dive more into that, but it's pretty crazy, like how much you can do with it. Um, anyways, so I'm going to, again, use a chop execute here, because when we press this button, we want this script to run. And here we uh, actually only need this to be an off to on, because we only need this to run once. So uh, let's delete all of these. Um, so we just have a nice and clean function here. And in here we want to, uh, let's make a, let's make a variable that's just called able for like uh, Ableton. And here we want to define the the uh, TD Ableton component. So again, if we zoom out here and go in here, it's this one. That's what we want to talk to. Because if you want to like use a remote script, this is the kind of operator you want to talk to. So again, we uh, type in uh, op and then um, go back one step, td ableton package. And then we want to talk to the td ableton component. All right, now we have set that up. Now we can use this and say able, able, abl dot run remote code. So this is just a kind of expression uh, to to uh, run a certain, uh, how do you say? Uh, fuck, I forgot the word for it. To run this kind of command, that's that's the word. Um, so I wanna use, uh, s like you need to type in song. That's just, that, that, in that way you're just calling to the current project, pretty much. I, I can't really explain it better. Then we want to talk to tracks. So there's just a list of all the tracks we have. So in this case, we just have zero and one. And so this is zero, this is one. We want to talk to this one because we want to set the MIDI nodes in here. And I'm going to uh, explain why we have two in a second. Um, so yeah, tracks number one, not zero, not but one. Then we want to talk to this uh, clip slot here. So uh, there's also a list of that, of course. So clip slots, it's also a list and we want to index, we want the index zero. And bef um, I'm going to show you how to like trigger uh, something like to some how to like make MIDI notes in an existing one already. So what we need to do is uh, no, actually, <laughs> uh, never mind. Um, this is actually the function to delete the clip first. So for that, you just need to say delete clip and um, close that again. So this is just a function. If there is already a track in here, which there is now, then this is going to delete it. And that's important. Uh, yeah. So if I run this, then as you can see, this was deleted. So what I can do now is um, show you how to actually draw MIDI notes in there and how to create a MIDI track, which is pretty much just the same thing. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do now is um, write in ABL again, and then uh, run remote code and then again song and a trigger session record so this is just starting the recording wherever you have like whatever is selected so it needs to be on here and then we're, we're talking to this one there because we've selected it and then we need to define how uh, like what kind of length do you want to record in I'm just going to type in four which is one bar and then we need to close that again. So now let's run this. And as you can see, 
it's being recorded here and then instantly looped, which is perfect, which is exactly what we need. So, um, yeah, so this is like four bars, one, one, no, like four, whatever, one bar long. And if we change this to like uh, eight, for example, then uh, the recording is twice as long, obviously. So now the cool thing is I can press record and now I can tap in here and then you can see I'm drawing notes there. So uh, yeah, nice, right? <laughs> this made me really happy when this worked. Um, so the thing is, why, why we're using like two mini tracks is like if we're playing it in here, actually, um, I, I don't want to like show you now actually, but for some reason it doesn't like record it here. Uh, like you can, you can see like the 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 MIDI data is coming here, but it's not being recorded. So I ask Ivan, Ivan, um, like who's pretty much the creator of TD Ableton, um, and he quickly responded and said like, uh, yeah, you just need to create a, a second MIDI track and refer to the third one, uh, first one. So um, that's kind of just what I did, and it works very nicely. So <coughs> I don't actually know why that is. So now let's let's also use the as a kind of a last thing that we're doing here, or like almost last thing. Uh, let's use this length um, to define this length here, actually. And I haven't found a better way but to just do it with a couple of if statements. Uh, that's kind of not the most beautiful way to do this, but it works. So um, let's uh, define a target again and uh, say op len. And then we just want the channel zero. So we just want this channel data, so which is zero right now. And we want to say if target is zero, then we want to run this script. And now we can just kind of do this is one or is two because it's not one two four it's uh zero one and two um if it is uh zero then we want to have it like one bar long this is two bars long and this is four bars long so now if i change this to like two and um let's have a look in here and press on record and now this is uh, eight bars long, or like two bars. I, I don't know how it's called. It's eight things long. <laughs> and um, if we set this to four and record, now uh, it's going to be even longer. <laughs> so yeah, um, this works pretty nicely. So the last thing we might want to do is uh, get back the signal here. So uh, if I just set this back to one, whoops, and uh, record and just play a little rhythm in here, then um, we might want to get this data back in here to be able to to visualize that. So how do we do that? First save. Um, <coughs> let's just go back here and split our view again. And let's go out here and in here. And this is why we have set up the second one. Here we can actually just go and say send only because we're only sending data. So we don't, don't need to receive anything. Here what we want to do is we want to select the um, this note. And let's actually select all the... Um, all the notes because we if we want to change the if we're changing the note we don't want to, this to change um, because there's some errors sometimes you might want to use like a logic chop here uh, which is just saying off when zero is less that's all right and let's add a null here and now we can just use this value um, on the uh, alpha and then we get that channel in there. So, all right, um, let me see, are we done? Ah, yeah, one thing here, let's change the background alpha to zero. Um, 
one thing we might want to do now is add sound. Usually you might want to, like you probably have some kind of uh, external sound, not your file, but just for sake of testing now. Let's have a file with a device out. And um, let's run this. Okay. Nice, this is actually working. Um, perfect. So, um, you know, you might want to have to like do this and yeah, there, there's some things I might just want to like tell you now. Um, so this, this always needs to be really like perfectly aligned to the one of the song. Otherwise the recording is gonna be kind of screwed. Um, because, y you know, there's actually barely any lag at all. Uh, so if this is like um, not at the right place, it's either because you have played it wrong or um, because um, the one wasn't aligned to like the one here. And that is actually kind of a difficult part. But, you know, like I, I don't really know how to make that better. That was kind of what I was saying in the beginning. Um, so, yeah, that always needs to be kind of aligned pretty perfectly. But it's, yeah, you kind of get the hang of it after a while and yeah, it just works pretty nicely. What you could also do um, is to use a MIDI in uh, and a bind chop and uh, actually use the MIDI in here and a bind chop on, on these. Um, so I can just show you that with a button maybe. So we can have just a button and then a bind chop. And we could use this value on the tab. And now we can also, oops, should be uh, momentary. Um, we can also play this tab button with a, a, an external input. So not just with uh, the user interface, it's also there. That's why it's so nice to have this up here in this level uh, with binding, because now you can also use like a MIDI controller or anything else to be able to control this. Of course, now this is screwed. Um, Okay, so um, I hope this works for you. I'm very glad uh, it actually worked out now in this tutorial. <laughs> um, and I'm very glad this worked out generally because of, uh, this is something I've been trying for some uh, for yeah some time. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try to like dive uh, deeper into the whole connection between Ableton and Touch Center because it's really amazing, especially if you like add Python to the whole mix. Uh, yeah, it's super cool. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this is actually quite a long video for me. And um, thanks a lot for all the Patreon patrons that are uh, supporting me. If, you, if you're if you not one yet, you, you might want to think about your life choices <laughs> and become one. Uh, I'm going to like post a file there as well. And um, I'm very grateful for anyone who is supporting me. And yeah, uh, see you in the next video.